my god, you guys. Hey, it's Philly, and welcome back to Spill Session. We're obviously talking about Shane Dawson because this is absolutely insane. I drama get in, it's official. Like, seriously, drama get in three. This is what we're in right now. If you guys haven't been on Twitter, Shane Dawson last night posted a statement where he was addressing the drama that has gone down with him and Jeffree Star and people asking him to address things. And he finally posted something and said, my final thoughts on the beauty world. And guess what? He deleted this statement. He deleted it. So when I first saw this, I thought, oh, here we go. Like, let's see, is this gonna put everything to rest? And he made everything 10 times worse just defending Jeffrey and kind of excusing what happened with James Charles and then deleting this entire statement because he can't handle all of the criticism. Uh, anyways, we need to read this. So welcome to the circus. My final thoughts on the beauty world. A few questions that I have been getting lately. One, did I know that she was thinking about making a video? Yes. Two, did I tell her to make a video? No. Three, did I have any involvement in the video? No. Four, did I orchestrate it? No. Five, did I need that kind of quote drama to make a good series? No. Six, have I ever tried to ruin a career or make someone look bad in my 15 years on YouTube? No. Seven, do I have a track record of getting into drama with people or having fights with other YouTubers? No. Eight, am I innocent and have huge anxiety provoking regrets about how I could have helped everyone handle everything better? No. I've had a pit in my stomach since it all happened. Now onto my final thoughts on the beauty world and my experience in it. The conspiracy palette was one of the best experiences of my life. The series with Jeffrey changed my life and changed me as a person. It helped me be more confident and stand up for myself, which I've always been bad at. So to honor the series and what I've learned from it, I'm gonna say this. The beauty gurus who are always involved in scandals are all the effing same. They are all attention-seeking, game-playing, egocentric, narcissistic, vengeful, two-faced, taking time bombs, ready to explode, and I'm over it. Yes, they are talented, creative, smart, and love makeup, but they also joined a side of the internet that is obsessed with looks, money, power, fame, screenshots, and subtweets, releasing private texts, voice memos, emails, and other quote receipts as a way to paint yourself in a particular light or someone else in a bad light is weird to me, and I will never engage in that. That is a game that they know how to play well, and I would rather eat my own hands off than play it. Yes, Jeffrey is in that list of dramatic gurus, and he would admit that and he will always be family to me, and I love him despite those characteristics. He's very aware of the fact that I don't agree with many of the ways he approaches situations, and I have been very honest with him about needing to make some changes. But as for being in the beauty world, I can't take the drama anymore, and it's not how I'm wired, so I'm out. It's draining, exhausting, depressing, and sometimes amazing, but for me, the amazing is outweighed by the bad. I can't have a pit in my stomach every day waiting for the next quote scandal or the next quote exposed video. It's going to give me health issues and I'm done caring about it anymore. I've never been involved in drama with another YouTuber ever and the second I decided to do a beauty series, boom, I'm in the hurricane. So did I plan Dramageddon? Are you serious? No. Do people in the YouTube world come to me like a grandpa and tell me their problems and ask me for advice? Yes. Is it easy for me to get wrapped up in something potentially toxic if I think someone I love is hurt or upset? Yes. It's an issue I need to work on and have been working on. When she told me how upset she was in person, I had the same reaction the world did when they saw her video. I felt awful for her and she seemed broken. So I tried to be there for her and be someone she could talk to about it. So was I shocked that she decided to make a video? No. Was I shocked that Tati read his effing filth? Yes. I wasn't acting. I didn't know it was going to be that intense. Looking back, I still believe her on a lot of what she said, and I believe she felt it was what she needed to do at the time. Does she regret it? Probably. Does it mean we should see James as some poor, innocent, sweet angel? No. Don't get it twisted. Him and Jeffrey have always been at the top of the dramatic guru list, and I mean that with love. Did I warn James about the video? No. Why? For reasons that I will never discuss. We've spoken privately on that, and that's that. Do I think James is the devil? No. Do I think he was a young, egocentric, power-hungry guru who needed to be served a slice of humble pie the size of the Effing Empire State Building? Yes. Has he grown as a person since then? It really seems like it, and that's amazing. I'm truly happy if he's realized how his ego was affecting others, which he did address in his No More Lies video. Do I think Tati is a villain? No. I think Tati was sick of being treated like by so many in the beauty world and finally snapped. And did she effing snap and all the way off? Holy smokes. 
she really said F it and beat her face for the gods and propped on that ring light and went full Game of Thrones on that. Say what you want about her or the video, but that will be in history books. I think YouTube Rewind even gave it an acknowledgement. Dang. Okay, sorry. Back to my rant. Do I think Jeffrey orchestrated this whole situation? No. Tati is a strong woman who made a choice. Do I think Jeffrey was also upset by some issues with James and some things he heard behind the scenes? Yes. Was Jeffrey excited to see a competitor fall? Probably. He's Jeffrey effing star. What do you expect? I guess I missed the part where he got baptized and devoted his life to Christ. Did Jeffrey take it too far and F up big time by tweeting what he did? Yes. It's one of the biggest regrets of his life. This all happened over a year ago and I'm really sick of hearing about it and having people constantly use it as a way to keep my name and other names tagged together in drama videos. Don't get it twisted. Drama will never end with a lot of these people. It's their game. Their survival, their drug. They love it. This specific drama went too far, obviously, and hopefully something like that never happens again. Putting drama in the trailer is something I regret more than anything in the world, and I'm mad that I chose tea over my morals. I'm really sorry to Tati and James if me putting their drama in the series at all felt like I was reopening up wounds. Although I did speak to both of them privately about the trailer, I should have not even done it at all. Drama might be fun to watch, but it's not fun to get wrapped up in, and it's my fault for letting that happen, and I'm sick of being trapped in the middle of it. Do I think this will be the last drama involving these people? Ha ha ha, no. No, I don't. Do I want to be involved ever again? F no. Remember not to expect these gurus to maintain some moral code. And we shouldn't have some they must be perfect or they're canceled mentality. The reason you watch these people is because they are so extra, they are dramatic. And if you keep canceling them and want them to go away, then who will you talk about? You don't go to a circus to watch the hay on the ground. You go to watch the over the top performers who just want to be liked and want to do whatever they can to get your attention. If you don't want to feed into it, then don't. But before all the drama free gurus pop off at me and say, well, I'm not involved in drama and I'm perfect. Girl, please, you're top videos are probably top makeup fails and anti hauls with vomit emojis all over the screen and that's okay i love those videos but let's not pretend that the beauty world isn't negativity first makeup second that's just how it is and i'm sick of people pretending to be so above it all and with that said i love watching beauty channels of all sizes and i will continue to watch and support them the dramatic ones the non-dramatic ones and the ones who genuinely just love to show their makeup skills sadly those channels get way less views for the reasons i have stated above so go enjoy the gurus enjoy the circus unsubscribe to me if you're mad that I'm no longer engaging in it. Unsubscribe to gurus who you don't like. Subscribe to gurus you do like. Just don't take the beauty world as seriously as I did or as so many of us did in 2019. It's not worth it and I feel like we all lost a bit of our soul during Dramageddon. As for my channels, I'm done with the beauty world. I love what I was able to create with Jeffrey and I'm sure people are going to assume I only did it for money, but that's not true. I just am choosing to no longer be a part of that world. I will still watch beauty videos, buy and play with makeup and be a part of it in my life offline. But as for being a part of that world on YouTube, I don't think it's for me. I need to get back to why I started YouTube back in 2005 and that was making things that bring me joy, not drama and to make movies one day. Makeup will for now just be a fun hobby. I have to help with my anxiety like slime or emotional eating and that all sounds really good to me right now. Woo! you guys you guys i have a lot of things to say a lot of things to say there are a few statements that he said in this that do not sit right with me at all including in regards to knowing about tati making the video he says looking back i still believe her on a lot of what she said and i believe she felt it was what she needed to do at the time He's still saying what Tati said in the video to ruin James Charles' life and literally drive him to want to end his own life. Like, he still believes her on a lot of the things that she's saying and also saying, does it mean we should see James Charles as a poor, innocent, sweet angel? No. So does that mean that you're still saying James Charles is a predator even though after one whole year, there is zero evidence to prove that any of that was ever true? It's, it's crazy. And then to say, do I think he was a young, egocentric, power-hungry guru who needed to be served a slice of humble pie the size of the effing Empire State Building? Yes. Has he grown as a person since then? It really seems like it, and it's amazing. I'm truly happy if he's realized how his ego was affecting others. Like, the... Uh, 
I didn't know that in order to serve up a slice of humble pie, you needed to expose someone as a predator, falsely accuse them all over the internet, blow it up to a big degree and drive them to almost end their life. Like that is not how humble pie is served up. And it just sounds like he is excusing all of the behavior that had to be apologized for last year because none of it was true and it escalated to a big degree. And you know, Shane is saying, that Jeffrey is family. They are freaking family and that's not changing at all. This was very much Shane revealing his true colors and his true feelings that he has been holding in. There is a lot of aggression and anger I am sensing in all of this statement and him saying things like, he's Jeffrey effing star, what do you expect? I guess I missed the part where he got baptized and devoted his life to Christ. It's like, no, but some influencers do need to be held accountable. If people are lying, and especially about very serious things, trying to cover up their very, very terrible and dark past, they need to be held accountable. And, you know, it's, if they are influencing others, that's not how people should be influenced by hearing lies and all of this stuff. That's why people talk about them because they don't want problematic people to influence millions. There are a ton of people that I do not make videos about. There are a ton of people that are not problematic out there and I love watching them. The same people that are problematic are, those are the people in my video. Notice that I make videos about the same people like all the time. There's literally a handful of people that are problematic, okay? And we're talking just on the YouTube world. It's always the same rotating people. And they're not just in the beauty world. What are you gonna say about Tana, Trisha, Jake Paul? It is a rotating cycle of these people constantly being problematic. And it's very rare if someone else is getting talked about and being brought into a discussion of being problematic. That is just it. And for Shane to say that the beauty community is so dramatic and he wants out, he's not gonna be a part of it anymore. Why did you do a restock and talk about it so at length on your Instagram story, on Twitter? It was literally his pinned post when he made this post. And I know a lot of people are saying like, you know, contracts and whatnot, but it's just really sad to me that he would do a restock and sell out his makeup collection and then announce that he's completely done with the makeup community entirely. He wants no part in it. Like, let me get my coin and leave. And that's exactly how people felt last year when the series came out, when they made all the money from the palette after it sold out and he didn't want to finish the series. He was like, I don't want to end it. And you know, he was getting so much backlash. This whole thing is just ridiculous. Like getting called a predator and driving someone to end their own life for a slice of humble pie. I just really don't think so. And like, what about Jeffrey? Like he's not holding Jeffrey Star accountable. He like said that, you know, Jeffrey is included in dramatic, you know, YouTubers and beauty influencers, but he's acting like, you know, Jeffrey Epping Star can't be held accountable. How dare we have standards for how influencers act? And he's just so over the beauty community and was never even in it. To be honest, he never made a single beauty video on YouTube. So he was never in the YouTube beauty community. He was on the sidelines holding Jeffree Star's hand through the entire thing. And, you know, still has the audacity to call Jeffree family. Notice how he really just thinks that leaving the beauty community clears his names after this giant attack he just pulled. Like, I just feel like he completely dissed James Charles and excused Tati making that video and excused Jeffrey calling him out and excused all of Jeffrey's dramatic behavior. Like, no, you can't just profit on a palette in a cash grab, make this whole makeup line and bounce when you're feeling like you're finally getting held accountable and questioned for your part in the James Charles takedown. Like he got away with not being blamed for the James Charles takedown for a whole year. Jeffrey and Tati were both held accountable and now Shane is finally getting held accountable and he doesn't like it. Especially when it seems like he was more involved than we ever thought or ever noticed in James Charles video, No More Lies, he shows a text message that he sent to Jeffree Star. But the Jeffree Star message prior to James ever replying reads, we definitely need to talk soon. This was in May. Tati and Shane, plus a few others, told me everything that you have said about me over the last six months. I am heartbroken, disgusted, and so sad to hear everything, but shockingly not surprised. 
I have only been a great friend to you and never said anything bad about you behind the scenes, which is obviously not the case for you. Which is absolutely insane because Cam said in his video that in February, months before Dramageddon, months before for May 6th, 2019, Jeffrey was talking about James with Shane on the phone. But it's like Tati and Shane were the ones to tell Jeffrey that James was talking bad about him. That puts way more of like a question in my mind of like, wow, who was Shane promising loyalty to? And then, wow, he really, I just, oh, oh my God. This is a little bit more orchestrated than I thought. Like they got Jeffrey riled up. And according to Ashley Kyle's receipts, the same exact day, Jeffrey sent this message the exact same freaking day. He said, I have only been a great friend to you and never said anything bad about you behind the scenes. The same day, you guys, May 6, 2019, he sent to Ashley Kyle, I wonder when someone is going to expose James Charles getting a Brazilian butt lift and liposuction on the chin. I'm waiting. Uh, I, 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 what? Ooh. So Shane actually deleted these posts and he said, I deleted everything I'm done. For those who wanted me to address it, I did. I'm sure you can find it reposted somewhere, but I don't want this energy in my life or on my timeline. I'm too sensitive for this and I'm done. Like Shane, you cannot pull the I'm too sensitive card right now when you just said that, you know, James Charles deserved a slice of humble pie okay in exchange for literally almost ending his life and wanting to end his life like uh, you cannot be too sensitive right now after all of the stuff in your past that you have done that is very bold and very offensive like now you're choosing to be sensitive because people are coming at you because you defended the one person on the internet that is just absolutely filled with lies and probably talks bad about you behind your back because <laughs> i mean he talked bad about everyone else like you should be careful you should watch yourself because if you're not going to be making makeup anymore you're not going to be a part of the beauty community anymore and you're not going to be making jeffrey any of that coin i don't know if he's going to be treating you with the same respect and i don't think just selling merch is going to cut it because you know, he was having James sell his merch on his website and look what happened to him. So, I mean, <laughs> clearly I think Shane needs to realize Jeffrey might not be family at the end of the day if he's not bringing in the coins. And this whole thing is just absolutely a mess. A bunch of people are coming out and talking about it and giving their opinions and I don't blame them. Someone said, so what I'm gathering is that Shane Dawson wrote a whole lot of nothing while admitting to being a part in orchestrating a smear campaign, but not taking any accountability for it. Now he's running off Twitter for a while because he's too sensitive for all this. LOL. Okay. And then not another drama channel said this and I had to include it. She said, imagine calling an entire community that you profited off of toxic when you had a big hand in inciting that toxicity. A hundred percent. A hundred per cent. I just, you know, I understand that Shane has always said that he has mental health issues and he's very depressed and he's very sensitive and mean comments get to him a lot, but it's just, you know, when you admit to being a part of or knowing that Tati was going to be making a video that Jeffrey had involvement in ruining James Charles, driving him to want to end his life, you talking about yourself and what you care about and being sensitive and can't handle any criticism is just complete like it's so hypocritical at that point because like what do you think james charles felt <laughs> you know and you're just trying to hide now it's i just i i can't this is all so frustrating he went off like so off he was so angry and for all of it to just get who deleted because he was sensitive oh my god like how do you think james felt I, I truly can't. So, I mean, <laughs> let me know what you guys thought about this entire statement, everything that has gone down. This is absolutely insane what is happening, um, but I had to talk about it with you guys. Um, rumor has it, a video is coming out later. I really don't know from who. People are saying, talk to you. I'm like, what's going on? So I love you guys. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye guys.